Moving along here now, we let's look at the second verse, verse number five. So in verse five, we have a we have a time reference. We looked at this, we looked at this before. And then we have this complicated verb. And then we have this object here. And then we have a, this is really a, a conditional idea here. And we're going to really unpack the significance of this. But so what we can say here is the, the, the accent, the focus between here and here is one of, of a strong call to action. Obey my voice. And so obey, there's a double meaning here, obey or hear. We could also say hear. So what's being said is if you will hear my voice, the intention is to obey, is to uh, is to obey. So my voice, or we could say a, a synonym for what comes out of the voice. What comes out of the voice is the word of God. So we have here the word of God. Obey the word of God. Hear the voice of God. And there's a, a strong call to act. If obeying, you will obey. Very strong. All right. And so then we talked about before here, if we zoom in here and look at this word, we have im, we have im shemoah tishme'u, im shemoah tishme'u. And so we, we have three letters here. You have a, a shin, a mem, and an ayin. And so th this is where we get the word or this is a, a, a derivation of the word. This is a derivation of the word uh, Shema. Shema. The the form that you would look up in the this is a this is a this is the imperative command. The form you look up in a lexicon would be Shema. Okay, but this is where we get this this incredible hear hear or obey, and so. The word we often use even in our liturgy is hear, hear the words of God, hear the call of the gospel, hear the proclamation of the word. And so the hear, the hearing really has this meaning of listen. You have to listen to what's being said with the result or the purpose, the act of obey, hear to obey. All right. Then we have a parallelism that's going on here. So we have a parallel, and we talked about this in the in the in the structure analysis, there's a parallel idea going on here and an object, the covenant. This is my covenant. You will keep my covenant. And so really what we can say here is there is parallelism going on here, parallel here and parallel here. So word of word of God is a parallel idea to covenant and keeping is a parallel idea to, to obeying. Okay. And, but then with so then with this co this covenant, we can identify which covenant is this. And so what I want to say here is that just to be clear here, you have the Abrahamic covenant, which they are a part of. So it's not that they're going to keep this new co covenant and not keep the Abrahamic covenant. okay? So in, within the Abrahamic covenant, they are to they are to be circumcised. And there is blessing attached, but built upon the Abrahamic covenant then is the, the old covenant, or we could say the, this is also often referred to as the Mosaic covenant, because Moses is the, he is the mediator. Now, so this is the, so this is the summary statement, the call to, to keep the covenant. And then we're going to look at coming down here, what we identified last time. I'm just going to re-highlight this. You have the and then this is the, the promise if the covenant is kept. So I'm just going to re-highlight. 
so that you can clearly see what's being focused here it's to see how how everything's related to the promise and then you have the the media the the mediation so this is really the the structure okay you have the foundation the works of god you have the the command the promise and then the mediation so then so then here the strengthening which we talked about last time is this not only are you to obey it, you're to keep it, to, to guard or to preserve it. And obviously, the, the, fa- the mistake of someone who's interpreting is to import all the different meanings for this word shamar into, into this word. And so, what, so my response would be, this word is a pregnant word that really, so someone who is guarding or, or caring for something, there's multiple aspects going on. We see in Genesis, in Genesis 2, let's go to Genesis 2 really quick here. In Genesis 2, uh, you are to, man is to, to, is to work. Avad, avad, uh, so that's the root, that's, that's the third perfect person. Avad, avad, he's to work it and he's also to, to keep it or to guard it, shamar. Okay, so so this is this is caring, this is protecting, this is sustaining. So there's there's a pregnant full meaning going on here. So coming back to here, the the guarding and protecting of the covenant is much more than just obeying it. It's preserving the words, it's maintaining it, it's protecting it from from corruption and 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 and, cor- and corrupting corrupting the the content. It, it's a very full picture here. So and, and that's going to be spelled out throughout Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, the rest of the Pentateuch. So let's look now at the significance here. So what I want to do now is I want to unpack this covenant. What is the full, what is the full meaning of the covenant? So this is just a summary, this is literally just a summary statement. And we want to, we want to unpack this. Okay, and so what I'm going to propose is that if we come out here, what what we're going to see is that the old covenant is is pretty much described. The old covenant is described in Exodus 19 through 24. This is really the 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 the, the foundational the foundational setup. For the for the whole covenant, okay. This is self-contained, and then you have things that are added, con- contextual issues added throughout. In Deuteronomy, it's the second giving of the same covenant to another generation. Of course, there's more contextual things that are being brought out. But what I want us to see here is that fundamentally, at the most fundamental core, we have this statement here: the Lord has saved Israel on the basis of the Abrahamic covenant, the promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's the past work of God. He gives them the covenant to keep. And then the promise is that he is that they are going to be their his treasured possession, a holy nation, and a kingdom of priests. And so what is the content of that covenant? So then so then after this is after this is stated, Moses is to give the words to the sons of Israel. Okay, so let's go ahead and let us look at. And then they agree, they hear the words, they agree, and then the Lord, the Lord comes. So let's, okay, let's go ahead now and let us let us work through Exodus 19 to 24, just really from a bird's eye view, highlighting the all the different components of the old covenant. Okay, so this is um I hope that we can see the the, the big picture here. I have on my on my left, I have on the left the, the text of scripture that we're gonna be just just briefly highlighting on, on and then I have on my right we'll just take the notes here so we have this this promise this summary statement the the works of God the the, the, the command and then the promise of being a treasured possession kingdom of priests and a holy nation these are the words that that you shall speak to Israel so what we can do here is let's write this down here so number one we have a a summary a summary slash call of the covenant. 
So this would be Exodus 19, four to six. Okay, and then so then Moses, Moses comes to the elders of the people and sets all these words that the Lord commanded them. And then the people say, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. So there's a verbal commitment. Then Moses reports the words to the people of the people to the Lord. So then we have a movement from the, the mediation to the coming of the Lord. So we could do uh, Exodus. So then we have number two. We have a the mediation of Moses between the people and God. And so this is Exodus 7 through, through 9. Then we have the coming of the Lord to the mountain. So then the Lord says, Behold, I am coming to you in a thick cloud that the people may hear when I speak to you and you believe forever. So hearing and believing. So you have the, the, the call of the covenant, the mediation of Moses, and then you have the, the coming of the Lord. And the purpose of the coming is that they would hear again Shema. The purpose of this is to is to bring about hearing and obedience, uh, uh, hearing and belief. So anyone who claims that the Mosaic Covenant fundamentally this is this is fundamental. Okay. Anyone who anyone who looks at the Mosaic Covenant. Uh, and and sees it purely as a covenant of republication of works and and of of human effort fundamentally there is an aspect there i'm not saying there is an aspect but anyone who sees it purely in this fundamental aspect this the the, the most fundamental being of of doing misses is not really reading the text because you have this believing forever that you may hear when i speak to you so of course this is th this this move towards obedience, but in this context, it's we should not interpret it as obey, so that the people may may hear when I speak to you and believe. There is this hearing to believe, right? This is fundamental. This is Exodus Exodus nineteen. In verse 9. Let's go to a parallel in the New Testament to see how similar this is. I didn't want to do this, but I just, we, we need to do this. So coming here, Romans 10, being ignorant of the righteousness of God and seeking to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. For Christ is the, is the end of the, of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. So fundamental in Exodus was belief, right, with the goal of Christ. Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on law, that a person who does the command shall live by them. But the righteousness based on faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend to heaven to bring Christ down, who will descend to the abyss. Was it, what does it say? The word is near to you. It is in your mouth and your heart, the word of faith which we pro proclaim. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that he has been raised from the dead, you will be saved. So this, this hearing, the word of faith, for with the heart one believes and is justified, with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. How will they then call on him on whom they have not believed? How will they, ha and how are they to believe in him whom they have not never heard? They hear without preaching. So is this, there is this hearing, believing, and confession. All right. So so coming back to here, it's not to say that there isn't a works principle that we cannot do. OK, there is a works principle in the law and Christ is the one who fulfills it 100 percent. What I'm trying to get at is that fundamentally the, the Mosaic law. Was to be approached by hearing and belief. And, and, they, and they could they, and they could receive the benefits of salvation through this means. If they only approach the law by doing and works of the law, they would fail a hundred percent. And so the, the, the but the faithful Jews, the faithful Jewish Moses, uh, the faithful Jews were, were commanded to 
And they did practice this fundamentally approaching the law by faith. And that's what they should have done. That's what they should have done here. Moses tells the words of the, of, of, of the people to the Lord. And then, so then the, the coming of the Lord, so the Lord comes. So coming down here, he, he, he comes to the cloud. He comes in the clouds to the mountain in thunders and lightnings in a thick cloud on the mountain with a very loud trumpet blast. All the, the people in the camp trembled. Sinai is wrapped in a smoke. The Lord warns Moses that the people should not come near because the Lord will break out against them. And then, so the, the Lord is now, so now let's just be clear here. At this point, the Lord is present to give the covenant. The people are present to receive it. Okay, so the Lord is present to give it, and the people are present to receive it. And so we have here, number four, the, the substance of the covenant. The substance. Okay, and this is going to be Exodus, Exodus chapter 20, essentially. God spoke these words saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. So number one, the fundamental component to the covenant is the person and work of God. Okay, the person work of God. And so we have here, number one, we have the relationship. They are in relationship with God. He is the Lord, your God. He is the Savior. So he so he is the he is he is in relationship with them. And he's the, also their savior. So your God. He is their, he is their savior. And this is the identity. He is the Lord of the covenant. So this is Exodus 20, verse 2. So moving from, so no one would say that there is, there is physical and eternal spiritual aspect so the, the lord is the lord of the covenant he that's 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 his position and then we have the stipulations of the covenant so these are the commands that are given to the people so we have b here the commands and these commands are what's referred to as the decalogue or we may say 10 words. So this is Exodus 20, verse 3, down to verse 17. Okay. And so then what are these commands? Let's come back up here and let's look at each command here. The first command is, you shall have no other gods before me. And so we want to ask the question, is this a, a temporal command or is this an eternal command? And so we would have to say that in this, this is clearly an eternal command. Prior to the giving of this command, prior to the giving of this covenant, the Lord demanded allegiance with Abraham in relationship. He was to only worship the Lord, his God. With, with Adam, there was only to be one God. So this is an eternal command in God's law this would be written on the hearts of man next we have you shall not make for yourselves a carved image or anything in likeness in the heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is under the water you shall not bow down or serve them so this is of course number two 
no images uh, to be worshipped. And of course, this as well is any this as well is a, an eternal command as well. For I, for I, the Lord, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers and the children of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. So then here we get to a declaration of loving God. And this is going to be further spelled out in the great Shema. Okay. Next we have number three, the command to um, not to take the name of the Lord in vain. Next we have remember the Sabbath. Now, this is the debated one. Of course, this is this the, the taking the name of the Lord in vain is also eternal, an eternal command. The remember the Sabbath is debated, but we can at least say, let's go briefly to Genesis. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it God rested from all his work with which he had done. So clearly, prior to the revelation of God's law. There is this uh, setup that the Sabbath is special and set apart. And so I would argue that this is also eternal in looking before and after. As long as this creation exists, we are to honor and respect the Sabbath. And so this comes to a, a, a major point that we're seeing here, that at this time, God is not creating law. He is not in the sense that he's bringing it into existence. It's not that God is creating or giving a new command that was not given to man before. We see in, in, in Romans 2 that God, in fact, at creation wrote his law in the image of God, in the image of God, man being created in the image of God in, on man's heart. What we want to say here is this is simply God revealing revealing his law which was always there was revealing his law and codifying it publicly so coming along here then we have and and the basis for this you see it down here for in six days the lord made heaven and earth and seen all that is in the rest of the seventh day so really this is also eternal you know, as long as this creation exists. And so we're saying eternal from the standpoint of it's, it, it doesn't, it's not a shadow is what I'm trying to say. Okay. It, it doesn't disappear. It doesn't disappear with the coming of, of Christ and the new covenant. Number, number five, honor your parents. This of course is also eternal. We see this commanded in Ephesians 6, we'll come back there later. Uh, number, number 6, no murder. Number 7, no adultery. Number 8, no stealing. Number 9, no lying. Number 10, no coveting. Now, there's huge debate with theodicy and how we understand with the male, female servants and the wife and all that. that that's just beyond the scope of our discussion here. We, we, we can look at that later at another time. Okay. But what we can, we can say here for all of these other commands, these are all eternal, meaning to say that with the coming of the new covenant, these commands don't disappear. They're still binding. So the big idea here is that the question is, are they still binding today? That's the question. Are they still binding? And 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 following up with this, uh, 
with reference to the New Testament and, and the New Covenant? That's the question. Okay? We can also then split these up into two aspects. We can split these up into loving God and loving others. And we'll come back to look at that. We will come back and look at that even further. And then we can say, oh, oh, fundamentally, this is loving God. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll come back there and really unpack that. Okay. So then once this is done, the people, so this is the fund, so this is the, this is the fundamental aspect of the law. So this is the, the, the foundation. And the foundation is both who God is and his command. Person, command. Okay, so there's two aspects going on here. This is, this is most fundamental. This is the substance. Okay, this is the substance here. So then coming down here in Exodus 20:18. When the people saw that the thunder and the flashing of lightning and the sound of the trumpet and the smell was smoking, they were afraid and trembled, and they stood afar off. And Moses said, speak to us. And they said to Moses, speak to us, we will listen. But do not let God speak to us, lest we die. And Moses said, do not fear. God has come to test you that the fear of him may be before you. And this fear really has this aspect of, so we can go then to the, the sea. We can go to the response. And this is uh, the call to fear God. And this, again, contains fundamentally a reverence and faith component. So, again, there is a works aspect in the law, 100%, that only Christ does and fulfills, 100%. But most fundamental in the Mosaic law is this call to believe and to trust. Now, the law did not give the ability to believe or trust. And so the failure, Paul says in Romans, is not with the law, but with mankind. But fundamentally, the law is not a bad thing. Fundamentally, the, the law, the Mosaic covenant is a is a revelation of grace. And so then we then we can say that this is the First administration in the covenant of grace, Exodus 20, verse 19. So then coming down to Exodus 20, then so then what so then how do all these other things relate? So then Exodus 20, verse 22. So now we're going on to then number five. And so this is what is number five? So then number five, let's look at how what Exodus 20, 22 and following says. The Lord said to Moses, thus you shall say to the people of Israel, you yourselves have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. You shall not make of yourselves gods or silvers. You shall not make gods of silver to be with me or make for yourself gods of gold. Looking at the subsequent context in Exodus 22, 22 verse, sorry, Exodus 20, in verse 22, this seems to be an unpacking more of the commands of having no other gods. So what we could say here is this is case, law, or, or uh, contextual, contextual, going into more details of what it looks like. Okay, so coming down here, we're talking about law of slaves, how you should treat a slave. But then, but if if we're talking about slaves, then so then Exodus twenty one verse one. This is dealing with the the neighbor's stuff right now. Again, there's we need to unpack that. That's for another time. It's just beyond the scope of our of our discussion today. But what we're trying to get at is that it's more it's more case law. Okay, coming down here. We have the, the a man selling his daughter as a slave. And I would just say right off, just to, to alleviate, because this is hard to, to, to read some of these things, is that the reason for some of these 
stipulations or this is this is how people were acting in their in their time it's because of the Jesus will say the reason for these laws is the hardness of man's heart the condition of Israel no one should be a slave and this is where this this is contextual things that 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 are done away with in the coming of the new covenant the issue is not with God's law the issue with the heart is with the hardness of man's heart and God gives extends common grace to allow to bring about his redemptive plans to allow these things to, to transpire. Here we have whoever strikes a man so that he dies shall be put to death. So this so this is coming back then to Exodus 21 verse 12 is then coming back to murder. So we really see what we can say here is this is case law that's really unpacking the 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 substance okay so this is more details contextual details so from this so from this perspective i would say this is shadowy this is shadowy this is eternal okay let's use a different color here Green. This is eternal and this is shadowy. Okay. And and you keep you have this. This this goes on for several chapters until we get down to, to Exodus 24. So there's all this contextual case law giving details. And then in Exodus 24, we have the the conclusion of covenant. So this is the conclusion here. And this is Exodus. 24. And so in Exodus 24, come up to the Lord, you, the Lord says to Moses, come up to the Lord, you and Aaron and Nabab and Abihu and the 70 elders of Israel worship afar. Moses come near. And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord of the Lord and all the rules. And the people said with one voice, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And so Moses writes down the words of the Lord. He rose in the morning and built an altar. So we have here now commitment by people. We have number B. We have the, the sacrifices that are that are given. Moses takes half the blood. He offers burnt offer, offerings and sacrifices and peace offerings to the of oxen to the Lord. Moses takes half the blood and puts on the basins. Half he, he throws against the altar. So he's he's spraying it. He takes the book of the covenant and reads it in the hearing of the people. So there is a, a reading of the covenant. And then all that the all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. We will be obedient takes the blood, throws it on the people and says, behold, the blood of the covenant that God has made with you in accordance of all these words. And so this is the end. This is the end of the covenant. And so then the, the blood of the covenant is, is thrown on the people. And actually, and actually, Moses literally says, "This is the behold the blood of the covenant." Okay, and so this is the this is the conclusion here. Incredibly powerful. So we can say here that this is the summary of the old covenant. There's contextual issues with with the sacrifices, with with the different case law, and then there's actual substance. Okay, there's actual substance. And so in, in class, we talked about this. And so I'll just redraw the picture. We'll come back to this later in the semester. But what I, I tried to bring out is you have, in this idea of shadow and type, you have the, the sun is shining light. And let's just say here that there's a person that's standing. This is the the substance, okay, 
and then the the shadow is cast. So then the the shadow is cast from from the from the sun. Okay, and so we have here the law is a shadow or a type but it points to the reality and the reality is the the reality is the law of god the new covenant we could also say that the the ultimate is the covenant of the the covenant of grace but the accent is with the shadow type is on this new covenant so it works both ways the, but the, the big takeaway is that when you see the shadow, the substance has to be present. So this is why we see a covenant of grace that's going on here, because the new covenant hasn't yet been inaugurated. All right. So it's not physically there. So you can't see the substance as being the new covenant because it hasn't been there yet. But in talking about a shadow, if we're talking about a shadow, the substance has to be there to cast the shadow. Does everyone see that? And, and so this is why theologians will talk about the, the, the covenant of grace. And so we can, to draw this out, covenant of grace looks back at um, old admin. The mosaic is coming into the present in the new covenant. And so the old admin still points to this. And so there is a substance revealed and shadow present. Both are present. So this is why dispensationalists will want to see eternal, eternal aspects of the it can't be, it can't be abolished. There's eternal aspects in the Mosaic Covenant. That's why it's coming back in the Millennial Kingdom. You have uh, progressive covenantalists and new covenant guys who are saying, oh, it's only a shadow and type. It's only shadow and type according to Hebrews. We're only in the new covenant. We don't see the covenant of grace. And I think the, the biggest balance view to see all that, uh, the, 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 the best balance view that's, that, that sees both is really covenant theology. And we have to understand this. So then coming along then, we highlighted the loving God and loving others. And then this is where in the, in the second law, so we, we can then look at Deuteronomy, second law. So let's go to, let's go here to the fundamental component of the second law, Deuteronomy. And we've done a class on this. I still have to post the video, so I apologize if you've not yet received this. I will get the video eventually posted. The fundamental statement of the great Shema. So this is most fundamental. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. That's literally Exodus, Exodus 3. This is Exodus 19, Exodus 20. And, and I am becoming very strong on this. This is not just simply the Lord, our God. There's an implied to be that we just miss if we don't speak a, 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 another language. This is really hero Israel. The Lord is our God. The Lord is one. And looking at it from the New Testament, 100%, this is a declaration that Jesus is Jesus is present in the Lord here. So hero Israel, the, the Trinitarian Lord is our God. The Lord is one. And then the command, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And I'm, I'm adding mind because of what Jesus is quote there. So this is the most fundamental, the most fundamental, both of these eternal. So then here in the, in the second giving of the law, we have. Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 5. The Lord, person, nature, and relationship. Number two, command or will, what he wills us to do. This is most fundamental. So looking at here, the old covenant summarized, and then we could we could just say that at the most fundamental level, it's loving God, loving others on the basis of this. 
but then even further, we even even further reducing this, the most fundamental aspect of the Mosaic law. The Lord is our God. The Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. So the most fundamental aspect of the Mosaic law is, is etern- eternal, spiritual, and permanent. Okay? So, my goodness, we could say here, second law, second covenant. But really, this is just a reinstitution of, of, of the Mosaic covenant, okay? And then moving along here into the New Testament, let's go to several fundamental passages here. And we're going to unpack these in this semester as well. Mark 12, 29. The most important is this. What's the most important of all? Jesus answered, the most important is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second commandment is this, to love your neighbor as yourself. There are no greater commandment than these. And so then coming now to Jesus, Messiah, he repeats confession, command, and then watch this here. This is where it's going to get crazy. Coming down here, you are right, teacher. Truly, you have said this. There is no, there is no other besides him. There is one. You sh- to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as oneself is much more than whole bird offering. So there's different levels in the law. And then watch this here. Jesus said to him, answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. So this is this is crazy here. So then the promise is kingdom of God. So this fundamentally is the same as here, coming over here. If we if we look at the summary statement. You have seen what I've done to the Egyptians, the salvation. I bore you on eagle's wings and I brought you to myself. And now if you will obey my voice, if you will keep my covenant, you will be my treasured possession because the whole earth is mine and you will be to me. Look at the promise here. Kingdom of priests. So Jesus is literally quoting the exact same thing this is really at a crossroads between israel old and new and so really the church is the the church of messiah and so you see the merging of 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 two here and the promise of the kingdom you are not far from the kingdom of god really defines that the mosaic and, and this is coming back to the command of love God and love others. So the command, the fundamental command is love God, love others. And the rub is the kingdom of God. And so we would want to equate kingdom of priests with this. Okay, and, and we're going to further unpack this. We're going to further unpack this big time when we look at the next section here.